right on. Look at that. This is the other camera, by the way. Um, I'm retiring the Sony and I've cleaned it up and it's got a tiny chip on it, but I'm gonna sell it to somebody for a tenner or something. So some kiddies can go out and play on the bikes and have some fun with it. Now, meantime, this uh, little section is a quick video. Sorry about the sound. The new camera that's coming, an upgrade on that one, so it'll improve on the sound. Just filling in with this uh, GoPro session for the time being. So this is a, a quick video. I wanna keep it brief. I haven't got a timer on, but this is how to make a um, oops, hold on. How to make a an adjustable nut from a bone nut. So I have in front of me all the things I need to do it. Uh, I have a sharp thing. I have a 0.9 millimeter hex key. I have two times M2 six millimeter grub screws, a cheap Chinese bone nut, and a 1.3 millimeter drill bit. And here, the secret bit, I have a micro tap and die thing uh, that's at the tap and this is the m2 one and it's a broken one already trying to do carbon steel so i've only got this one left and a block to raise this up now what i'm going to do is show you what i do so let's put it back on here um, pull the thing forward so you've got a fairly good view it's not going to be in close up exactly because i don't have the means to do that so i'll get as close as i can with the bits and pieces to show you what I'm doing. That should be reasonably good view. And there we have it, right. So this is a, quite an easy thing to do, but it's good fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark a couple of points on my bone nut. Now this is Chinese bone nut. The only thing that matters to me is it's the correct spacing, uh, the string spacing as, let's say an existing one that I'm replacing, which I'm currently not. I don't have a need for this one. I'm just doing this on per, uh, you know, on practical test. So first of all, I draw my center point. Now, the nut is slightly sloped, so your drill bit, if you try to drill into that, it'll roll off or push off, bend off sideways. So the first thing I've got to do to make this work is to take uh, a sharp point like this and hold it there and just give it a little bit of a, a start. Now, it's just physically, be careful so you don't end up spiking your finger. But it's a, just a start point and that's all I need. You could, but you know, you could use a drill and go a bit further into it than that. But this is this is the bit that helps the drill bit then stay in place. So you can you could use a drill. Oops, that's wandering off. That's not so good. You could uh, you could use a drill bit. Sorry, you could put this in a drill and just gently get it running with not too much force in it, just to get a little indentation. It's probably easier than waggling it side to side. But there we have the sort of marks. Now those marks will um, take this drill bit much easier and help it go straight down. Like I say, if we wanted to, we could put this very quickly into here. No, that's not what we're doing. We're doing this. Put that big flat wood bit into there. And with a bit of holding in place um, and at right angles, you know, um, we could just help it along the way a bit. Where's the, where's the hole? So this, this is slightly different, so in, in, this won't bend out of the way. That just gives me a better indentation. Um, slightly off the mark there, but it's not that far off that it makes a difference. But ideally, when you're doing it, you want to get it right on your mark, which I just drew by eye anyway. So this just gives me a, a head start. Now, next thing to do is we're going to fit this drill bit up into the um, world of the thingamajig. This thing, whatever it's called, you know what it's called. <laughs> I tried to have all these things and laid out, so I knew where they were. Into the pillar drill. So this is a miniature little bit, um, but it will still do the job nicely. Now I'm going to move some of these things because we don't want them dragged up there so let's take all our little parts away easy to lose of course I've bought a whole set of these grub screws and bits and whatnot so always know where I've got spares somewhere so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that drilling table as far up here as I can possibly go god it's quite hard get you up there as well Got this camera work. 
what's his name? Um, Kubrick would be proud. Now, what I'm going to do for this fine drilling, I'm going to just give myself uh, some room and I'm coming at an angle so I can see the way the drill's going in, sort of uh, make sure it stays in place. So there's, there's a good start point. So I'm going to fire away. And there we go. And work straight down, so let it bite first. Take it nice and slow if we can. thing on the planet. It's not too bad. This one's slightly off the mark here. Come on, down you go. That's it. see what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring you back down here. Mm. We're on well, seven minutes. We've got to keep this going. Now, what's happened here? I've got my joint has frozen up. Hold on. <laughs> Correct. That's better. I'm one second. Got it all twisted. Sorry about this. Everything's gone a bit wonky. Now, you don't want to be that way up. You'll be upside down. Uh, hold on. No, that's no good too. Hold on a second. Where's my joint gone? Turn around, please. I want this downwards. Give me a second. No, yes, no, no, that's the wrong way. Oh, hellfire. Come on. That's it. I'm nearly there. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm wasting time doing that. I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. There we go. That's sort of somewhere we can see. Right. So, we now have uh, a... We now have a nut with two holes drilled through um let's have a look where they are they're not too bad not perfectly central but they're not a million miles off now here's the fun bit we get our micro tap die tapping thing and we place it in here now it, these never go kind of go in exactly straight because they're very small and they bend and stuff but you want it in fairly tight and then from top down you just want to hold it on there and turn it until it goes in the hole. So turning a mixture of the piece and the uh, tapping, is it, what's it, I don't even know what it's called, a tap. And you just basically keep going until you're all the way through. Now, I know that when people do steel and other metals, they backwards and forwards and stuff. This doesn't feel like it wants to do that. It feels like if I try and do that, it'll break something. So with bone, it tends to like going all the way through and once it's all the way through then it's happy to come backwards because it's pushed out the excess so we're all the way through and then we can come back now you want to be very careful with this because you don't want to enlarge the hole the um this hole is a fair bit bigger than the grub screw but it's the best size to do it um the measurements are the ones on here on the board but so you could be careful taking it off <laughs> blow off the dust then you get your little your little um Grub screw, which, like I say, can disappear very quickly, and you place that on the end of your um, hex key, and lo and behold, in it goes, and out the other end. Okay. Now this, at the moment, as you can tell, this uh, is probably too high a nut. Well, it will be for the kind of first fret actions that I aim for. So, what will be involved here is some sanding down of this nut. Now, if I want to, it probably makes sense to sand down 
as long as you're careful to sand down the excess of the grub screw with it. 10 minutes <gasps> at 30 frames per second. So we get down to the end here and get this one done through. And amazingly, nothing split. The, the, the um, bone doesn't break or anything. It's quite resilient. Um, so like I said, you, you're going to need to lower it to a start point where ideally at the start without adjusting the grub screws you kind of want your strings to be lying just touching the first fret and then the idea of course is to bring the nut up using these uh, grub screws. Um, so that's going to take some reduction of the grub screws, uh, sorry the reduction of the saddle but you see the principle is if you careful you can take some of the um, I'll do it here. You can take some of the uh, grub screws down with it because by the time we've reduced this saddle quite a bit, um, sorry, this nut quite a bit to fit, um, you, you don't want loads of metal sticking out. So it's a matter of knowing roughly how much you've got to take off. So I'd be typically putting that inside the nut slot and saying, okay, maybe it's about that much, just for example. So we're going to take some of that down, but while we're at it, Let's just make sure the grub screws stick out a bit because while we're at it, we can very gently take those down too. And you can see it's leaving a bit of metal dust trail. Um, and what's nice about that is for our purposes, it actually flattens the grub screws a little bit at the edges and it makes it a little bit of a better footing when they stand on the uh, slot. Now, the point about these, if you've probably worked this out already, 11 minutes 38, oh, nearly there point about these is obviously first of all this is for a strap style guitar um, the other point about it is as you can see uh, it's going to have to sit on something to operate now I've done my experiments so far I've been fitting these directly into the existing nut slots so therefore we end up sitting with the grub screws pressing against uh, maple usually or sometimes rosewood um, now, some people think, well, that, how can that work? Well, it does, strangely. So we've got nice flat grub screws. Obviously, we're flattening as we go in. Um, if we're going to take them out from this point inwards, roll them all the way on through because they've got a little flat edge here. You probably can pull them out, but we don't want to compromise the uh, existing threads. So basically, you'll be fitting that, and you want these screws maybe a little bit up. Um, obviously, I may not do that now, but you want them a little bit up like that um, at the height you want it with the strings touching the first fret and then you'll make your final adjustments with the hex key putting a little bit of footing under there. Now the whole thing obviously stands on that when it's playing and it works perfectly well. I've not had any problem. Right, that's 12 minutes 57, 58, 59, 13. See you again.